Hey there, uh, Mike Babiak here. Um, I thought I'd do a, kind of a little rundown of a rig I've been working with lately. Um, it's with uh, my uh, 89 American Stratocaster and um, a little old Fender and a couple of pedals. Um, and the Stratocaster's fitted, uh, the, the main point is uh, the Stratocaster's fitted with uh, Duesenberg benders. And uh, so I've been playing it as a lap steel uh, rather than as a regular guitar. Um, so um, I'll run through the rig first uh, real quick, uh, and then uh, I'll play a little bit and kind of just show you what the benders do and kind of the, the real basic sounds you can get out of it. Um, okay, well, I'm going to switch. Uh, I'm going to grab another camera and switch over, show you the rig. So here's a, uh, it's a, it's a 66 uh, Princeton. Uh, I was told it has a 65 transformer. Um, so I guess it was made over a couple of production years, uh, probably just overlapped. Um, on the my very sparse pedal board, <clears throat> I've got a, that's a Talonix volume pedal. Uh, very, very smooth, uh, remarkable piece of gear. <clears throat> Here is... Um, my origin effects slide rig, uh, which I use pretty, pretty consistently when I'm playing any kind of slide or steel. Um, it's got the stacked, um, the, you know, the dual compressors. Uh, and I guess the idea is to emulate, uh, something like, uh, the, uh, the way Lowell George recorded. Uh, I think he used uh, a couple, I think he used a couple of 1176ers, 1176s, um, you know, one into the next um, in series. Uh, it's a very nice pedal too. And uh, here is my Flint Strymon that I use for uh, tremolo and for reverb. It has a really nice reverb and uh, with, with a lot of nice choices for reverb. Um, <clears throat> let me pick up my guitar here. <clears throat> and so here is, uh, here is the Strat. Um, I think by the serial number I figured out it was about an 89. It's an American. Um, you can see it has, uh, let me do it this way, you can see it has a nut extender and um, there's a, a lot of room under the strings and so it's it's for steel only. Um, <clears throat> uh, rosewood uh, fretboard. And then here are the benders. Uh, these are Duesenberg benders. Um, Duesenberg makes a replacement kit that's just four Stratocasters, and so it was real easy. I just pulled the other one, uh, the original, out, and this drops right in. And then you have your choice of uh, where uh, and uh, where to put the benders on what strings, uh, and then how to set them up. I, uh, I, I'll show you how I use them, um, but I think I'm using a pretty typical setup. I have, uh, let me get some volume here. There we go. So I'm using a, an open D tuning, um, you know, that's, that's uh, D, A, F sharp, D, A, D. Um, so root five, major third, root five, uh, root. And um, so I have the, the first uh, bender is on the second string, the A string, and that uh, if you're in a D major chord, for example, that takes the fifth up a whole step. Uh, to a major sixth. And then um, the second bender takes that third, moves it up a half step. Um, so three to four, uh, F sharp, if it's open D, it's F sharp to G. Um, so that's the setup. Um, I don't have a whole lot of trouble with string breakage. Uh, some people do complain about that. Uh, I don't play this super hard with a lot of real fast bends. Uh, I tend to be a very, pretty pokey player, um, so maybe that's why I'm not having any trouble. Um, but just to avoid potential trouble, I do use um, the, I put a little of the silicon, uh, the big bend nut sauce uh, on any place where there's friction, and that includes up here on the, uh, on the, or the uh, nut. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to switch. Uh, I'm going to set my camera up so you can, uh, so I can free my hands to play now. Um, so I'll be back in uh, just a tick. Okay, so uh, back with the camera pointing down and my hands free now. Uh, I'll point out here I'm, I'm using one of uh, these great uh, crystal 
glass uh, tone bars uh, by Ian McWay's uh, uh, Diamond Bottlenecks company uh, in England. It's just a fantastic uh, size for me. Um, the weight is great. It's it's heavy, but not so heavy uh, that uh, you know it's sluggish. And of course, being glass, it's uh, it's just really super smooth. Uh, really love it. Um, <clears throat> so um, so I said, um, you know, I'm using uh, Open D. And so uh, it's just a couple of, of examples of what um, <clears throat> what you can do with these uh, Duesenberg benders. Um, so here, here, let's go up on the twelfth fret, and so we have just a D major chord. And so if that's my one chord, you know, the first thing I can do is um, I can raise the third string, the, the major third, up to a fourth. You get a nice suspended chord. Um, and then uh, if I uh, raise, if I raise just the the uh, second string, um, the fifth to the major sixth, um, if there's a, a B in the bass, uh, that's a B minor then, you know, the relative minor. So I have one, six right here with just one stroke and of course uh, you know if the if uh, the bass player or if i voice it if bass player is playing a d or i voice it this way just have a nice d major six chord yeah so one and six <clears throat> and then um i guess the move that most people uh associate with the pedal steel um, is if I use both of these and raise the third to a fourth and the fifth to a major sixth, I go from one, from D major, to the four, to a G major. So uh, one, four. Um, a to, or D to, to G. Uh, and then a couple of other little things you can do with it. <clears throat> so, you know, if here's one and there's four, here's a G down here, you know, straight across. Here's five. Um, you know, if you go from from the five down here um, and raise both of those, you're back at the one. And, uh, you know, little move might be uh, if I'm soloing and I'm on the one here. Up to the dominant before I'm going to the four, you know, so. There's the four. So, you know, there's, there's the, uh, the one, there's the one dominant. Because there's the flat seven. And then I'm raising... I'm raising the, um, what is that, the fourth to the fifth. Now I'm up at the four chord. Um, what else can you do? And you know, the, that move works backwards too, you know. Um, so here with no, no uh, benders, open D. If I'm sliding down to that nice dominant, one dominant chord. Um, what else? Oh, and you can do... Um, there's one four, and then, uh, so I could do one four four minor by just learning how to do um, this first bender to go just halfway. One four four minor. One. Uh, anyway, that's uh, that's kind of the sum of things. That's just kind of your basic stuff. Um, 
um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else I want to show. Uh, oh, um, one thing um, I will note. Um, so when setting up the benders, um, well, in general, when I tune a steel, um, I t if there's a major third in it, and sometimes if there's a sixth in the tuning, I'll flatten that. I'll sweeten it a little bit by going maybe four or six cents flat. Um, and it kind of depends on who else I'm playing with. And, you know, obviously if I'm flattening and sweetening and then the other person isn't, they're not going to match. They're going to have beats. And so I, I don't do it then. But, you know, with a little vibrato, um, that can help uh, cover that up. Um, so I flatten that major third a little bit. And um, also when uh, the ghost goes from the fifth to the, to the major sixth here with that first bender, um, because that tone uh, serves as a major third uh, in, uh, you know, when I do both uh, bends, um, I sweeten that a little bit too. Uh, I make the down position a little flat too to give me a, a sweeter major third. And if you want to know about sweetening and major thirds and the problems with um, equal temperament, you can, you can just kind of Google that equal temperament and why like our major thirds are... Uh, in, in our system of tuning on your tuner are actually a little too sharp. Um, um, and that's true for the flat seven too. The flat seven is really sharp. Um, but that's a whole other video and probably beyond my expertise, really. Anyway, um, anything else? Oh, oh yeah, just one other thing. Um, so, you know, the, the advantage of this is, you know, you can play regular kind of bottleneck stuff. I, I just... Uh, I just did a gig. Uh, I just got hired to do something. Uh, it was a CD release party where there was a lot of different kinds of uh, slide guitar, including pedal steel and uh, dobro and um, and a bunch of regular guitar. And I got ki hired, I guess, as kind of a utility guy because I could at least approximate. I could play the guitar parts and, and the bottleneck parts. Um, but w when it came to pedal steel, I also could use these benders to to get the steel parts at least to give the flavor of a pedal steel a lot of things uh with this setup you that you can do on a pedal steel that you can't do with this setup uh but at least those those kind of real basic moves um are are available um so it's a it's real useful um give it a shot um the Duesenbergs aren't super expensive they were easy to to uh change out and set up um and that's all have fun